Okay, 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 okay. Let's try this. Can I roll my chair? No, I can't. What is happening? Well, hey everyone, Franz and Anemones. Thank you so much for joining me here on this Underwater Pat YouTube channel. I'm Underwater Pat, AKA Underwater Pat on Instagram. We're not Underwater Pat right now, Above Water Pat reporting live from Underwater Pat's living room. And uh, I wanted to try something a little bit new this year here in the year of our Lord 2020. I've been diving in the Monterey Bay for about 11 years now and I'm trying to post photos and videos on Instagram. I'm usually looking at one or two photos, couple of videos, put those out there and then I usually go diving again or I want to look at something different. And so there's a lot of stuff that's left on the cutting room floor. There's a lot of uh, stories that are that I don't get around to telling. Underwater photography is such a ridiculous thing to get involved in. It seems like such a fundamentally frivolous activity. It seems uh, almost like an indulgence, but there are so many cool things happening out there in the ocean. I think the only way that I can square this ledger of living such a blessed life, being able to go diving, take these photos, uh, the only way that any of that makes sense is if I share what I see with all of you folks out there that help support the rest of society while I go and screw around in kelp forests. So hopefully this is worth your while. I uh, hope you like it. Just going to try something new here and that's going to be pulling up photos and videos from the dives that I've been doing and just kind of walking through them with all of you folks there tuning in. So without further ado, this is going to be dive one of 2020. Uh, let's dive in, shall we? Okay, so got proper hydration here. <laughs> Uh, let me know when there's uh, too much brand placement there of uh, Dive Mola. Dive Mola, the Monterey Bay's dive sticker. Dive Mola, the Mola for your diving. Dive one of 2020 uh, at Monastery Beach, 4th of uh, January this year. So this was my first dive uh, in the bay at Monastery Beach. It's my favorite beach to go diving at. You can see here this beautiful kelp forest. The winter time is really the best time to dive here in the Monterey Bay. That's when we get the blue water uh, between the storms and the wind and everything. Obviously, there's not as much time to get in the water, especially if you're a shore diver like myself, economically tied to my own feet to walk in. Uh, if any of you folks out there have a boat, love to jump off of that. Uh, but otherwise, we're walking in. Here is the view there of the kelp forest. So this was uh, a little bit for the viz check. You can see kind of hazy, how hazy it is there. And uh, the first subject that we saw on the dive was this kelp rockfish. So super fun. You can hear the, the pressing of my inflator there on my BC to help keep myself a little bit neutrally buoyant. But this was my first little uh, animal encounter, just the rockfish in the surge. It was a little bit sporty that day there. A um, little bit sporty getting in and out of the water. And you'll see here some of that wave, whoa, some of that wave action. And uh, kelp rockfish are always doing this. You kind of see them pointing straight up. They're trying to pretend to be the kelp blade. You can see it's neutrally buoyant, just going back and forth there with the surge and I'm doing my best to try to stay in position there. You can see the lower part here of the kelp. Those are the sporophylls, uh, which are the reproductive parts of the giant kelp. And uh, kelp rockfish, Sebastes atrovirens, they look like, they look like you've just asked them a question that they don't know the answer to or they're staring at you like they're supposed to know your name and they don't, definitely don't remember it and so then they go off and try to camouflage themselves you can see that swaying motion there that's the surge the wave action moving back and forth all those sporophylls their reproductive parts of the giant kelp off of the bottom there really really cool stuff so then here um, this is heading towards the edge of the drop-off at uh, North Monastery and uh, you can see some of that wave action did have some fatalities or some casualties rather here of the giant kelp because this is the hold fast or the um, not the roots uh, kelp don't have uh, roots like land plants but this is uh, basically the anchor for the giant kelp holding it there to the seafloor and as you can see it got ripped off same as this other one up here. So there's two giant kelp plants ripped off of the bottom by the swell action and then now tied up with this other kelp plant. You can see there that knot 
that twisting there. Oh, a little crab right there. Hello. Hi. But you can see there that huge knot of it. And that's me readjusting my camera. Good job, Pat. Readjusting the focus midway through the clip. That's professional stuff. You can see just how twisted it is. And then here I am trying to move backwards there. Show you a little bit. So you got this giant kelp anchored to the seafloor, having caught some of its brethren that have just been ripped out by the winter storms. This happens pretty frequently this time of year. The big waves, the big wave action. Oh, a little little tube snout over there on the upper right. So this happens every year. Uh, and actually, the bigger the kelp plant you are, the more friction you have on your thallus on that body of the giant kelp. And so the more dangerous it is for you if you're a very big, healthy kelp plant. Um, so that was one of the notable things I saw. Uh, and then here is one of my favorite things to see scuba diving out here at North Monastery Beach. It's this school of blue rockfish. Um, blue rockfish are Sebastes mystinus. There's also um, diaconus, uh, which is the deacon rockfish. I can't really tell the difference between them, uh, but there's two different species of blue rockfish. Basically, that's the whole point of that. And uh, this school in the wintertime likes to hang out in that kelp cathedral there. Uh, and it's one of the coolest things to see. There's um, hundreds of these fish and there can be separate schools. Some young ones, these are some of the uh, more adult ones. Also mixed in with the school of rockfish, there's gonna be a blue rockfish. There's gonna be some other rockfish like olive rockfish, yellowtail rockfish that hang out in them. Um, really, really cool. These rockfish are pelagic. Uh, or they, they eat pelagic things, rather. Pelagic just meaning uh, adrift on the open ocean. There's one of those uh, yellow or olive rock fish. I'll zoom in on, on the video here when I edit it and, and confirm. So those, um, those rock fish that we just saw there, um, they like to eat pelagic things. So um, they're kind of waiting at the edge of the kelp there, waiting for that food to come over to them. So they'll eat jellyfish and uh, passing plankton. And what's really fun about blue rockfish too is that um, when you see those big schools at night, they'll often come down a little bit lower to the reef, maybe hide out in a crack or a crevice, and then they poop and pee, bringing a connection between the rocky reef and that open ocean. So you've got jellies and other bits of food that are created at a distance out away from the coast, make their way into the kelp forest, and these blue rockfish are there to nibble all that up, come on down into the reef, poop and pee, boom, a uh, whole lot of fun there. Exchange between the offshore and the near shore, the connection between those two ecosystems happening via those rockfish. Okay, now let's look at the photos from that day. So it's usually a good idea when you're out scuba diving uh, with a camera is to kind of pick and choose if you're going to be doing photos or videos. Otherwise, you kind of wind up disappointed in both. Um, but I try to take video clips of, of things that maybe are hard to photograph or especially now that I'm going to be doing this YouTube channel, I'm going to try to have a few more videos. I used to collect so many videos and um, and then they just kind of sat there on my hard drive. So that's also part of what this uh, channel is going to be, hopefully, is get uh, more of those videos out to you folks. And actually gives me more motivation to take video. Um, taking photos is a little bit easier, obviously. You can, uh, well, easier in that, in terms of data management when you're done, because you take a photo and then you edit it, maybe it takes an hour or two, put that up, boom, that's a story, and, uh, and you can move on. With video, often it takes many, 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 many hours to even make it look semi-decent, so, because you have to look through all of it, you have to cut it, edit it, maybe put it to a soundtrack or something, so I kind of switched over to photos back in 2014 from just a, a data management standpoint, but I used to take a lot of videos and hopefully we'll be doing more of that. Okay, with that, let's take a closer look at the photos from that dive over here. And uh, so there's that photo there of the triple uh, stack of giant kelp where you've got the hold fast of the primary one there that's holding on to everybody. There's another giant kelp plant that got ripped up off the bottom and then there's the last one over here and you can see um there's you know a little rockfish over here that's hanging out um but this is going to cause huge amounts of drag on this particular kelp plant there as well so maybe it'll come untangled maybe it won't there was huge swell today um so things aren't looking too hot there for 
these particular kelp plants, they might get ripped up. This happens every winter, not to worry. Uh, normal process, a lot of this kelp will either sink out into the deep sea, get fed on by a whole bunch of animals that kind of wait for this manna from heaven. So you've got this entire ecosystem of detritivores and herbivores that are living in the deep sea that wait for the winter time to kind of get almost all of their food there ripped out and uh, sunk out to the deep. So um, that's what you're seeing here is some of that uh, activity there of ripping up, clearing out space on the reef. Obviously with sea urchins and other things happening along the coast of California, um, kelp being ripped out may not come back right away. Same thing as it used to, but um, anyway, part of that winter cycle you're seeing there with that giant kelp. Uh, moving along, so this is a little bit further down the Monastery Canyon wall. You can see these super tall kelp plants. I'm about 50 feet deep here, so uh, this giant kelp is going from about 45, 50 feet straight up to the surface. You can kind of see my bubbles there, uh, a few of the rockfish hanging out there. You can see a little bit of algae growing here off of the side rocks. Uh, this I just want to take a photo of. I think these are young giant kelp that are starting to grow in amongst these abalone jingles. You can see all of these little individual shells there. Those are all abalone jingles, which are uh, kind of a type of clam. Um, uh, one of those bivalves there hanging out. So the orange stuff you see there, that's going to be some sponge. There's some sponge right there. A little bit of bat star action. Nice coral and algae is the pink stuff. Got a fish eating anemone there hanging out. Got a little bit of sponge and maybe some bryzoan over there on the side as well. Um, so that was just on my way down. I ended up going to uh, 100 feet on this dive just to kind of take a look at what was going on around that area. You can see it's pretty blue, pretty pretty clear stuff. Um, so not a bad not a bad day there. Uh, this is down around 100 feet. Main focus of this photo was this San Diego Dorid Diolula sandiagensis right here. Um, you've got a whole bunch of cool things here on this rock though. So there's one of those abalone jingles right here. Uh, this is a brown cup coral. There's a few more brown cup corals right here. This is more abalone jingle stuff, some sponge hanging out. Whoa. Uh, over here, we've got a painted greenling. I believe this is Oxylebius pictus. Uh, these ones really are, they're very common, but they're very skittish. They don't really enjoy camera lights too much. So kind of fun to have one there in the, in the background before it jetted off. More orange sponge. Uh, pretty neat stuff, but here, I think I want to zoom in a little bit more. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I want to, can I zoom in a little bit more from here? What do you think, Lightroom? Nope. Okay. We're going to zoom in from here. Oh yeah, let's get it. Okay. Look at this little boy. Woo. You're so cute. This here is a little scallop that, uh, um, was uh, found these in a few of my photos here. Teeny tiny little scallop. Not sure if this is a swimming scallop, what species that is, but fun little detail there. Um, oh no. Ah! This is clearly untested technology. Okay, we're back in. Nice. So there was something else I wanted to point out here. So uh, in here, you got a lot of bryozoans or moss animals. That's these little patches here. Those are really delicious for a bunch of different uh, nudibranch species um, that you may see about. Uh, these little, oh, there's my other little scallop. That's the one I wanted to point out. There's a little scallop hanging out next to some bryozoan. Uh, pink coral and algae there, crustose coral and algae. Uh, this is a serpulid worm, a um, bunch of little wormy boys, little tubes there. Uh, this is some lacy bryozoan. And these little things on top of my abalone jingles are things that I really don't recognize. I'm not exactly sure what this is over here, what this is. Yeah, I'm not entirely sure what's going on with those particular things. This outline here is my abalone jingle. Uh, here, I'll zoom out a little bit. Uh, so this is the abalone jingle right there, the little scallop, and then like, I'm not exactly sure what's going on there. Uh, but there's a whole bunch of cool stuff when you zoom in. Yeah, so like right here on top of this one, not quite sure what this is. Not really quite sure what this is, what those are. Could be worms. Could be parts of the abalone jingle. There's more of that lacy bryozoan. Uh, but anyway, always such a fun thing to zoom in here on these photos. There's so many cool things. I don't know if you noticed, but down in here, there is a big old brittle star hanging out. Look at that brittle star. Look at those little spikes from its arms there. Little bat star hanging out. 
Anyway, I won't bore you further with this. Got some kelp over here. Um, but yeah, so uh, lots of life. This is one of my favorite parts about diving out here is there's just so much life uh, all the time. There's a little bit of a better lit photo of that painted greenling right there. Cool. Okay, moving right along. Nice. So here we've got a uh, here we've got a decorator crab that's hanging out upside down underneath this fish eating anemone that's hanging out right there. We got some of uh, this lacy bryozoan. Oh my god. Got some tunicate action in there too. Uh, hanging out there on the legs of the crab. So this is actually growing on top of the crab. These decorator crabs have little Velcro like hooks on them. They can attach animals to themselves or the animals grow on them. That's what's happening right now. Uh, you start seeing less and less algae, obviously, the deeper you go here at North Monastery outside of Crestos Coralline algae because there's just not enough light at that point. Okay. Oh, this is fun. This is one of my favorite favorite worms to see is the windmill worm. A uh, very blurry photo because I didn't spend too much time with it, but um, if you can see right here, it's got that windmill action. Enhance, enhance. There it is. Nice. Here, we'll just do this from now on. We'll just hide these panels, clean it up ever so slightly. Look at this. We are professional. Oh, nice and clean. Cool. We're going to do this from now on. Nice. Glad we figured that out. Okay. So windmill worms, they're really cool. The worms come out and they'll actually put a whole bunch of mucus there around the windmill and they'll catch food and then the worm will come out and lick it. Uh, Heather Reef, uh, shout out. Um, Heather uh, has a really, really amazing photo of one of those worms actually coming out. She had a macro lens when she happened to be there. I, for some reason, whenever I see these worms, I always have the wide angle on. Okay, a little bit of tea. <laughs> nice, nice. Uh, oh, this is really cool. Here is a pinto abalone. Pinto abalone are a, they're a species of concern under the ESA from Sitka, Alaska to Baja. California. They're a little bit difficult to tell apart from uh, the more common red abalone that we have here in the area. One of the main things you want to look at is uh, notice here, uh, you've got your little X current holes here. Notice how there is this olive yellow here. We're going to zoom in here a little bit more even. So notice how there are these little yellow tentacles that are hanging out there. And also there's this rib along the edge of the shell, kind of a double wave there on the, on the edge of it. That's how you know you're dealing with, oh God. And uh, the other part is that it's foot here. You can see super roughly and it's got these alternating red uh, or um, brown and white bands there. So that's how you know you're dealing with a pinto abalone instead of a red abalone, which is more common. Abalone are massive snails. This is their big shell right here. Uh, they're really beautiful. If you see the other side of their shell, um, it's got that mother of pearl on there, super iridescent, super beautiful. Um, but that is a pinto abalone that was kind of out there in the open, interestingly enough. Anyway, point of this photo was that abalone. Uh, here is just a beautiful little arc of red volcano sponge. There's a bunch of different types of red sponges, but uh, you know, if you're ever wondering if kelp forests are colorful, they are. Uh, don't let the green water fool you. It is absolutely beautiful. Here's a little keyhole limpet hiding out right there. There's a little butthole. Hi. We got uh, leafy horn mouth hanging out right there. Got some bryozoan bushes there hanging out. Uh, ooh, looks like we got a little line chitin there in the back behind this erect coralline algae. Uh, just a whole bunch of fun stuff here. So yeah, always take a closer look here at the rock if you're out diving. There's so much cool stuff. Uh, here are some fish eating anemones and a white spotted rose anemone. I am not going to give you the scientific name to them because uh, as I understand, there is massive debate in the scientific community right now. Uh, all of the anemone species, all of the scientific nomenclature might be completely bunk. So uh, scientifically name your anemones at your own risk, everybody. Uh, there is some major drama going on out there careful with your Linnaean system if you're keeping your anemones close, okay? Underwater pat out there looking out for you. Um, they move around, they're familiar, they can kind of tell you exactly where you are on the reef. They're nice little uh, marking spots of like, oh, if you go over here, you'll see this, you'll see this uh, anemone, and then you go up over here and then over there. Um, so little waypoints, nice little buddies that kind of hang out. They live a very long time and they kind of spend most of their time in the same area, but you see them moving around every so often. And there's a little bit more detail of that reef, but just look at the polka dot little shorts there on the stock of that white spotted rose anemone. 
A little bit of sponge there. A ton of barnacles hanging out. And then just the glorious fish eating anemone there with the potty mouth. One way in, one way out. 20 minutes. God. Moving right along. There is a leafy hornmouth orgy. These are all of the leafy hornmouth eggs that were being laid out there. Super fun. Uh, we got a little turban snail here. Uh, and uh, yeah, just these are all eggs there for leafy hornmouths. Leafy hornmouths are a really awesome snail um, that uh, eat barnacles. So you can see from that last shot with all the barnacles there around that uh, anemone, there's obviously a whole lot of food. There's some more eggs up there. There's the fish eating anemone. Uh, this is very blurry because I had a longer shutter speed and just kind of took that as ID on the way by. Okay. Uh, there's some of that long shutter speed there with some kelp getting artsy with it. You know, uh, this is my dive light there. Didn't really edit too much, but that's me getting artsy. Here's me getting even artsier by just wanting to take a photo of this gopher rockfish going uh, through a wormhole. You can see it's gone directly into hyperspace there. Um, this just happens if you leave your shutter speed open, you've got a light that gives that nice blurring effect, but that's a gopher rockfish that was hanging out. Pretty fun stuff there. Uh, again, we got some more anemones, white spotted rose, fish eating anemones. So many of these animals at North Monastery pointed out into the current waiting for food to come to them. Another way for that pelagic food to make its way onto the reef. You, when there's lots of jellies around, you see these, uh, See these anemones filled with jellies often. Oh, here we got a little bit of a photo shoot happening. You'll kind of see here how bad my lighting is, but um, uh, before I edit it, but uh, this is just um, two anemones that I know very well that I've taken a lot of photos of over the years. Um, and so you can just see it kind of just posted up in this spot. Here's one that I edited a little bit more. You can see the difference between that and that. Um, oh, that was the photo I ended up posting on Instagram. Yeah, there it is. Nice. Yeah, you can see it's loading all that information I put into it. Uh, yeah, this is one of my favorite spots to go diving when I just need like a mental reset on on diving in, in the bay. Uh, it's as classic as it gets. You got the giant kelp with the huge hold fast. You got all these anemones, all the colors. It's just so dramatic. Um, and so I've said hello to these two anemones for many years now. What's up? my dudes good to see you again and then at the end of the dive we had here our blue rockfish friends um these love to hang out in that kelp amphitheater there uh really a fun uh group to to take a photo of but um i was running low on air at this point so didn't spend too much time hanging out with them this time around uh, you got right here your uh your olive rockfish that's hanging out here with the rest, these two there. Uh, different species from the blue rockfish. Two different species of blue rockfish, like I mentioned at the start of this video, um, but there's that olive rockfish. So there we go, confirmed, olive rockfish. There it is, oh, hi. Uh, olive rockfish, because as far as I can tell, there are no um, specks of color on the on the scales below the lateral line. Otherwise, yellowtail rockfish and olive rockfish are basically identical. Um, Sebastes serenoides and Sebastes flavidus. You can see here hanging out with them under the kelp. So you can see most everything in this image is blue. And so when the color is kind of bad, a really good trick to use is to just make it black and white so you can play with contrast of light and dark instead of having to deal with the color. That often works really well with uh, blue rockfish because um, they're blue. And if you're lucky, the water's blue. So um, this often looks pretty good. Let's see. Did I take anything else? No, we're coming. Oh, God, a little fancy here. Did a little slow shutter and a spin. Oh, goodness. Look how artsy we're getting over here on the channel. First video already breaking all the rules. Uh, <laughs> if this fish was slightly more over here, this would be really rad. But um, because it's spinny, but there isn't really a subject in the middle other than like these um, kelp blades here are crisp, but if there was a fish here, it'd be tight. Uh, here was a giant spine star that looked like it had a little bit of wasting going on. Maybe the sea star wasting that happened in 2013 uh, is ongoing. There are more um, sea stars that continue to waste, but it's really kind of slowed down. There's been a, um, not a resurgence, but the survivor starfish that we're seeing around, they've, they've kind of held on. Uh, giant spine stars, Pisaster, Giganius, they were, they were hit pretty hard. Bat stars, really not too much, um, but 
uh, yeah, every so often you see these animals with their legs all crossed up. That is potentially a sign of, you know, they could just be injured, but uh, that is what a lot of them were doing if they injured or something else. But that is what a lot of them were doing when they were starting to waste as they start crossing up their legs, kind of trying to cover those things. So you see that every so often, want to take that photo anyway, if there's any sea star researchers out there that made it to this point in the video. Uh, here you can kind of see the back of this star. So all of these little orange bumps, those are little pedicillaria, little pinchers that will um, help keep the sea star clean and kind of help protect their gills. That's what these skin gills are right here. So you'll often see all these skin gills, this fluffy, furry stuff here. You'll see those skin gills often really exposed when it's eating something, digesting something, which is maybe what this sea star is doing there as well. Uh, but you can see here, those are its little skin gills sticking out from inside the body. That's why it looks so fuzzy there. Um, and uh, yeah, all right, let's keep moving. Blue rockfish, blue rockfish, blue rockfish, more blue rockfish. As you can see, unedited, very dark. Blue rockfish, blue rockfish, blue rockfish. Some of those will probably be good. Loading, more blue rockfish, blue rockfish, blue rockfish. I guess I took more photos of blue rockfish than I thought. Uh, and then this is the view looking out from the kelp forest on the way back in. The reef is on my left. I'm swimming back to the beach. Uh, there's your black and white little treatment there. Oh, and um, yeah, I should have, let's see, how many minutes in? It's good Lord. Okay, we'll just put up a 30 minute video as the first one and we'll see zero subscribers to the channel. Perfect. The best part for me about diving in kelp forests, not only are they just absolutely gorgeous while you're in them, but uh, when you're doing your safety stop, your three minute, 15 foot stop, uh, help clear out some of those dissolved gases that you got in. You get to do it with kelp and a beautiful photo subject, uh, 15 feet in the kelp, looking at the growing blade. Um, so here, this uh, repeating pattern is one of my favorite parts in all of nature. One of my favorite, um, it, it's, it's like umami for the, for the eyes. You just can't get enough of it when you see this repeating pattern. This is the growing blade of giant kelp called the scimitar blade. Um, all of the kelp comes from one blade and then tears off from there. We'll see it a little bit more. Um, and so I just got really, you know, into the kelp they're taking some photos here uh the little white things you see there those are some uh sclerorbid worms those are worms and then in here those might be some uh bryozoans there but those are some worms that are they have a little shell there around them so you can see them those are kind of little little worm spots there on the on the kelp there so giant kelp is also habitat for so many other animals out there so it's not only food it's not only uh, an ecosystem engineer because it alters the wave action alters the shading alters how much room there is on the seafloor uh, it's also a habitat in and of itself a microcosm for other animals or a macrocosm for microcosms to settle on rather there's an edited photo posted that one on instagram we got a little channel top snail hanging out in the back just that beautiful kelp blade they're going up to the surface may have overdone it a little bit on the lighting there oh it's fine you can see it's really hard to get your strobe to really hit the kelp the way that you want uh, or at least it is for me um, so I'm just kind of trying so many different things here uh, there's one of those channel top snails uh, what species is that I'm blanking Again, it doesn't matter because they'll probably change it. This is one of my favorite things too, is just looking at the snails happening in the in the canopy. They're there chewing, chowing down, doing what they got to do to survive up on the kelp. We're getting there. Yeah. Boom, that's the money shot from the day. Uh, as you can see there, all of these blades are coming off from this one big blade over here on the right side, all connected back here to what's called the stipe right there. All of those little floats there are called pneumatocysts, P-N-E-U, like a pneumatic, so using uh, gas. Um, and so in here is some oxygen, carbon dioxide, carbon monoxide, um, helping buoy the kelp up to the surface. And this is that growing part you can see here, the blades are individually ripping off from there and then we'll end up becoming one of these beautiful tall boys in the background you can see there in the back that canopy uh giant kelp can grow to be over 200 feet uh growing up in our area from about 70 feet deep in some spots up to the surface and then splaying out there over the top one of the fastest growing plants in the world um don't at me about 
plants versus algae. It's a photosynthetic organism that eats the sun. I'm not going to get more technical than that. Uh, Heterocona Fight Club over here. Uh, this I thought was a pretty fun uh, little peephole, little <laughs> or porthole peephole. God, it's not that kind of channel. Wait, or we don't know yet. It could be. But there's a little porthole there into the other world there on the other side there of the giant kelp. Could edit that one. Uh, there's our top snail friend again. More kelp, more kelp. Okay, that's a preview for the next video. But with that, everyone, thank you so much for watching this dive vlog episode one with yours truly, Underwater Pat. If you like this video, uh, shoot me a like. If you loved this video, maybe subscribe. Um, ring those bells. Smash that like button. Um, but no, thank you so much for, for watching. I hope this was enjoyable. I certainly enjoyed talking that through with everybody. Um, if you uh, want to support more of my work, uh, but a special shout out to all of my patrons out there. I just launched a Patreon uh, this year. Thank you so much to all of the patrons. They're going to be right here on the screen. You are all the best. Thank you for believing in my work underwater. And with that, I'm actually just, I think I'm just going to go change my clothes and pretend that this was another day. I'm just going to try to crank out the rest of these uh, episodes here. Thank you so much for watching this first episode. I have to figure out how to finish and wrap up. I guess we'll figure that out as we go along. What is my conclusion? Oh God, I'm having a crisis. Okay. My conclusion is going to be, all right, everybody. Thank you so much for watching. Let's go diving. Okay. Okay. Cut.